I hope you like our lovely picture, 1937 Jaguar SS100. So this lovely car started life in 1937. It's been stored for many, many years and nothing has happened to it. Now it's back here in England from America where it's been for many years and we are going to restore it. But this is really the example of what we make now for the Suffolk SS100 and I've been making now this SS100 for 26 years. There's a huge amount of detail in one of these cars and making sure that everything is correct. We have specialized people who do work for us and create the cars as perfectly as we can do so. For the last seven years, we've been also focusing on the C-Type. Jaguar's car started in 1951 for the racing in Le Mans races and they became very well known for racing. Oh, here comes Fraser. Fraser, come and tell us all about the C-Type. He'll tell you all the details. My name is Fraser Williams and we're here at Suffolk Sports Cars in our workshop. The SS100 is one of the most beautiful cars that's ever been produced. The rarity of it and the fact that we can produce a very hard to find, you know, 1930s sports car. It was the car that kick-started Jaguar. It was the first car to wear the Jaguar name. I think with the almost archaic mechanicals of the original SS100, being able to upgrade that as we do with the modern Jaguar 4.2 drivetrain, the independent suspension, the disc brakes. So you can create a 1930s car that's one that you can actually use and enjoy on a regular basis and have a lot of fun with and feel safe driving at all the time. It performs and competes a lot better. Is something really special. And the C-Type, an exceptionally rare car, they only made 53 ever. So being able to reproduce those and we make a car that's one of the most accurate and you know, best finished out there. There's, there's a number of other replicas that in many respects don't quite fit the bill in terms of their mechanical setup or their quality of finish. We try to cover as many of those bases as we can to produce a car that a Jaguar enthusiast can be really proud of. So here we are in the showroom. This is where we have a range of our existing cars which have already been built by us and we resell for our clients as we like to offer a good selection of pre-owned vehicles to those who might not want to wait or may want to find a car that matches an existing specification. We also hand over new cars to customers. This one here has been built for a gentleman who lives locally to us. So looking under the bonnet of this car, we have a 3.4 litre Jaguar XK engine with two SUHS8 carburetors. All the mechanicals we have to source from original Jaguar um, cars and parts and we fully recondition them which would take several hundred hours to do. As you see we work to remanufacture everything to a better than new standard to get it looking as good as it is here. We've painted all the aluminium bodywork underneath in a matte silver to protect it so it maintains looking in as new condition for as long as possible. Um, this car is a fairly standard specification with its equipment, but we'd also be able to offer things like automatic, power steering, left-hand drive, and any other equipment the customer should wish for. This car, for example, has a heater fitted in the cockpit, which is piped through the bulkhead and all hidden away so it can't be seen. And uh, everything else, we have a aluminium radiator with a thermostatically controlled electric fan as well to ensure the cooling of the car is kept at the right temperature in modern traffic conditions. So this is where we undertake all the works to manufacture and prepare the interiors for all of the cars that we make in-house and we also carry out a number of retrimming works for original Jaguar cars, so things like Jaguar XK120s, 140s and 150s 
and also Jaguar E-types and some Jaguar saloon cars, Mark 1s, Mark 2s, etc. We have access to a wealth of different suppliers. So for example, uh, a C-type that we did for a gentleman in Germany named Wolfgang, he wanted the car to match exactly in colour to his Bentley Continental. So that meant that we had to find leather which was Bentley saddle leather, and that's not the same colour as Bentley used, it's the same leather in every respect. And I mean, the options that we've got are endless, right down to, we can even get Valmol leather, which is what they use in the, uh, the House of Lords and the House of Commons for the leather benches. International field gets away to a fast start for the Grand Prix endurance race at Le Mans. Quickly, number 18, a British Jaguar, forces its way into the leading pack. The race goes on for 24 hours without a break. I think with the Jaguar brand, because particularly with their, their motoring heritage and particularly their motorsport heritage in the uh, 50s and 60s, releasing the XK120, the E-Type and cars along those lines that were so accessible and they were realistically within the realms of affordability for the day-to-day -day motorist. It's been very much a brand that's accessible to everyone and I think that passion and particularly the Britishness of the brand is something that people will always look to and admire. And on the fourth lap, Moss passes Villarese. So it's Jaguar, Ferrari, Ferrari, Jaguar. England versus Italy. And then as the leaders lap the smaller cars, number 18, Tony Rose Jaguar, breaks the lap record and flashes past us into third place. I think for me, the passion for cars has always been there because my father was into cars his whole life. My grandfather was in the cars. In fact, we've been doing it as a succession for over a hundred years now. My grandfather, my father, and then I. So it really does run in the blood. So I've been in and around these vehicles ever since I was a baby, right through growing up. So I think really it's the only natural choice for me as to something to do, but I do absolutely love it. And there's still so much passion in my life for it. And it's something that I look forward to getting up and doing every day. And I still get excited when I get to take one for a drive. The, the job satisfaction of being able to follow something from the raw materials right through the finished product and the customer collecting their car at the end as a special relationship rather than just a transaction really, really creates, as I say, an enormous job satisfaction for the guys working here because they're totally connected intrinsically with what they're doing and with the person that they're doing it for and they get to see the appreciation and the, the pleasure that that gives to the customer at the end. So that's really important as well. So I'm very happy today. Good. The weather is right. Uh, the founder of the company here, the follower <laughs> as well. I'm ready to see it. To see it, definitely. Okay. okay. I have it in Switzerland, always with the national registration. Right. And there was a time where I loved to see the WW on my plates, which I have a lot of cars, which is still the same. Yeah. Now I would like to be more animous. Mm. You know? <laughs> yeah. And it's coming close to the time where I have the chance to try it the very first time. But you can't compare it at all with this, this one. Yeah. <laughs> This is the very first time. Wonderful. I 
I think the special thing with our cars is we recreate the original cars as closely as possible with the best possible mechanical upgrades where we can, but also trying to truly recreate that visceral emotion that just isn't available in a modern car. So that real connection with the road, the steering, the tyres and the engine, everything that you're doing in the car you're fully connected to and it creates a real driving experience. Nowadays, in a modern car, you're steering it, you're making it go, you're making it stop, but you're fairly well disconnected in terms of the outside world, the things around you and what the car's actually doing. Typically, we would never fit a radio or anything like that. There's no need for uh, anti-lock braking systems, traction control, anything along those lines, because the car and the chassis is engineered to be a fun experience and a sporting experience for the driver but also one that you can plan to use on a regular basis and do several hundred miles in over the course of a day with no problem. You don't have those electronic driver aids overriding you every step of the way. You feel a lot more connection in terms of you can feel everything that the car's doing. You can feel the changes in the road surface. You can feel the movement of the suspension and the engine rising and falling through the rev range as you drive. And those things, as I say, create a real raw sense of emotion that any modern car just doesn't give you.